Hi YouTube, so today we got a leaky faucet and we're gonna diagnose and fix the problem and actually I was here last week and I started on this project and as I go along you'll see why it took me a week because I had to get parts. This faucet is a quarter turn ceramic cartridges are in here, not the old style washers and seats and, the, and I can tell it's quarter turn because the handle only turns a quarter turn. When, when you see that, you know automatically that there's a quarter turn ceramic cartridge and just so we, we get it straight right away, this is a quarter turn ceramic cartridge. So there's no washers in here to fix. You can't, uh, you can't uh, quote, fix these things. You have to replace the parts. This particular faucet is, uh, is um, there's no name brand. It's not like a, a Kohler or a, or a Newport Brass or something like that. Um, we never figured out uh, the manufacturer, um, which is difficult because they're decorative and there's a million different styles of manufacturers and you can't really tell which one is which. But uh, I'll keep talking as I go along. To start, the first thing we're going to do is we want to take the aerator out because later on when we turn it back on, if there's any debris in the pipes, it's going to get stuck in the aerator and just make the water squirt out all crooked. Um, because the little screen's going to get clogged up and that's just going to make more work for us. So carefully I'm going to take the aerator out and I'm going to set it aside. And that next very important thing is to close the drain or put a, a rag over it because we don't want any small parts to fall down the drain and we're going to use them. Uh, this is a tool I'm going to be using a lot in this project is the adjustable wrench. And the next thing we're going to want to do is, uh, is turn the, the supply off underneath. And this particular vanity cabinet has these drawers that we're taking it out to get to the shutoff. So we want to get the shutoff. This is under the sink. So we want to get the shutoff valves. And uh, there's one that's the hot side. And there's the other. It's the cold side. So let's see if we can we can do this so I'm gonna sometimes these are frozen and you gotta put a wrench on them but as I said I was here last week so they're loosened up that's the cold and I'm gonna turn off the hot and okay so now make sure they're snug and we're gonna come on out and we're gonna double check up here that the water is indeed off Alright, so that's one problem we don't have to deal with. Our shutoffs actually work. Uh, so the, the supply is shut off at this point. The next thing we have to do is take these handles off. Now, a lot of handles, they'll have uh, Allen, Allen uh, keys. Not this big one, of course. I'm just showing, for example, but Allen keys. Um, and I'll, But there's two kinds of Allen keys. There's the American and then there's the metric. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure you use the right size tool because you don't want to strip out the little Allen that's going to be holding these handles on. Some of them actually have two. Uh, this one has one, but it's not an Allen. It's a small, regular bladed screwdriver. I'm just showing these for argument's sake. So I'm going to take out my small screwdriver and I'm going to find it there. And I, I don't want to take that screw all the way out because I don't want to lose it, but I definitely want to take the handles off. So I'm going to give it a couple of turns until the handle comes off. The next, the next step is we're going to want to take these Eustachians off, these trim, these trim rings. And we don't want to use any wrenches or anything on this that's going to scratch it up. They're going to scratch very easy. This is decorative brass. It's a very expensive faucet. Uh, decorative brass, very expensive faucet. We don't want to scratch these by putting any tools on there. So I'm going to grab it and use all my strength. And remember, as with everything, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So lefty means we're going to turn it to the left. It's counterclockwise to loose. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we have our astuchians off. Another thing you want to be careful for with this, if your astuchian is stuck, or even if it's not stuck, this is is free and it's the supply line goes underneath it is possible if the threads are struck and you just keep twisting this you can twist the supply line underneath and actually 
do a lot of damage. You're going to have to uh, damage the pipe and have a leak. So be careful that it's not twisting underneath while you're taking the, the stushion off. Sometimes I actually stick my hand and hold it from underneath and, and twist the stushion to get it off. So, so here we go. Now, again, your ceramic cartridge. Your ceramic cartridge. So we're going to want to get our wrench on this nut to take these cartridges out. And as I'm going along, I'm going to talk. We don't want to misdiagnose this problem. If your faucet is dripping, chances are it is a bad ceramic cartridge. But it could be another problem. There could be a piece of debris in there. You could have metal fatigue in the barrel and uh, and it, it could be a crack in the barrel and even replacing the cartridge wouldn't help you. So you don't want to misdiagnose. Chances are the ceramic cartridge is the fault, but it may not be. So I'm going to, because I don't want to twist the pipe down there, like I said, the supply line. I'm going to grab low on the barrel with my channel locks. And I'm grabbing low because I don't want to damage the threads because the Astushian trim ring screws on there. If I damage the threads, I'm going to have trouble later. So I'm grabbing as low as I can on the barrel with the channel locks. And I want to get a good grip on it, but I don't want to grip it enough to crush the threads. And then I'm going to take my wrench and make sure it's nice and snug because we don't want to strip these bolts, which would lead to even more trouble if I strip the, strip the nut on this ceramic cartridge. So, as long as it moves and I get a quarter turn, I know I'm good. So this guy's loosened up on the cold side. Now a little water's coming out there. That's just because there's water in the faucet and gravity's bringing it out. So I may either want to keep a rag around here sometimes when I work, or I'll put a rag under the cabinet because I don't want to spill any water underneath and do any damage. Because remember, I am a professional. And I'm going to get about 200 bucks for this job, plus the parts. So I definitely want to do a neat job and not look like an idiot. So again, I'm grabbing as low as I can on the barrel. And my adjustable wrench, again, I'm going to make sure it's snug, because I don't want to strip this nut. And again, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. There we go. That's the eighth of a turn, so I know I'm good. And I got it. Loosen up enough to take it off by hand. I don't need my big tools anymore. I'm going to set them aside. So our next step, I remember a little water is going to come out. <coughs> but I got that rag underneath to catch it. Here's our old ceramic cartridge. Now if you can see, I'm going to hold it up there. Uh, maybe i got to get a little light on this. If you look in the barrel there, and now I'm going to open it up. And you can see the opening, the black is the opening, and the close. Okay, so it's two ceramic discs, and ceramic is actually glass. Open and close. And close. Open and close. And ceramic is basically glass. When this is open, Ceramic is basically glass. When this is open, the water is going to flow through there and come out the faucet. When this is closed, it's going to stop the water from coming out. But what could happen is a small piece of debris can get stuck in there. And as the two discs pass over each other to close, you could actually scratch the glass. And that will give you a leak. There's also this rubber seal on the outside. That could go bad. That could give you a leak. Down in the barrel, that's this, the, that is the, that is the deck where this blue rubber seal is going to seat when it's tightened up. A misdiagnosis of a bad cartridge, this deck could actually be cracked from metal fatigue. It could have dirt. Uh, it could have a piece of debris stuck in there. We want to get in here and clean this out when we're first diagnosing the problem and we don't want to use any metal tools in here so we would use a rig and we would make sure that that deck is clean 
and it doesn't have any debris on it that's going to prevent that blue rubber seal from seating properly. So when we're first checking this problem out, we're going to want to take this cartridge out. We're going to want to clean this up. We're going to want to clean this rubber seat and put it back together and see if it indeed still leaks. If it still leaks after that, we're going to want to get replacement cartridges and install them. One of the big problems with these quarter turn ceramic cartridges is they're very specific. You have to have the exact, you have to have the exact cartridge to replace the old one. And there's literally hundreds of ceramic cartridges available. This is uh, my book that I use. All right, so the ceramic cartridges start here. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds, all from different ma manufacturers, Brasscraft, Crane, Dolphin, Elke, Gerber, Growy, Hands, uh, there's the Imports, the Jacuzzi brand. There is Milwaukee, Perlick, Price Fister, and that's just a, a, a small sample, but there's literally hundreds. And the big problem is to, is to get the specific cartridge that you need. Now these replacement cartridges, like I said, I came last week to check it out. And uh, I actually had to take a digital picture of this and email it to my supplier in Corona, Queens, in the shadow of Shea Stadium, to get these replacement cartridges that I'm actually going to uh, match up right now to show you. Okay, they come with a, some of them come with a protective, protective rubber cap on them. But you have to get the exact one. These are very specific. And they're specific in the spline size at the top. They're specific in the, the length. and Because and, everything has to fit together. These uh, Eustachians have to fit over them to thread onto the shafts. It's very specific on these ceramic cartridges. So again, when we're diagnosing it, number one, we want to clean it out and put it back together and make sure that it's, uh, that it's not leaking because you may indeed be able to fix it by just cleaning it out. That doesn't work. You have to ID the cartridge and you have to order new ones. Now here's a little tip for you. You can actually, <clears throat> here's a little tip for you. If you know the manufacturer, let's say it's a Kohler, let's say, and you know this, you can actually call the 800 number on customer service, like go to www.kohlerforces.com. Call customer service, you may be able to warranty and get new ceramic cartridges sent to you at no charge or maybe just a minimal shipping charge because these replacements because we don't know the manufacturer and the part number for this is actually UNK unknown this was actually like 46 bucks plus shipping I had to get two so it's a it's gonna cost the customer about 120 bucks for me for these two cartridges alone and then my labor I'm gonna get 200 bucks for this job I don't fool around and let me tell you, any of you handymans out there that's not charging a lot of money, which I consider over 100 bucks an hour, I charge 125, you're letting yourself be exploited. You can't give this work away for nothing. And for you consumers out there, you want good work, you want a good handyman, you're going to have to pay him big money. You're not going to want some kid or some immigrant coming in here for 20 bucks to try to do this. This is like an $800 faucet. And they're going to scratch it up and they're going to ruin it. You're still going to have a leak and you're going to be having to replace the whole faucet and calling a real guy like me or, or a plumber out of the phone book to fix it. And it, not only the $800 faucet replacement, but you're going to have to pay for the new faucet uh, labor to install it. So we're at the point now where we've got them both loosened up. we got them both out. We have diagnosed the problem. So this manufacturer actually has them indexed with a red one is for the hot and the cold one is the blue color again blue being cold and red being hot my replacements are not index colored but it's very easy to figure out which one goes where by just imagining which way the handle goes as long as i have it out now i'm just going to check that my spline size is indeed correct by putting the handle on there so i'm going to check that my spline size is indeed correct so I'm going to get in my barrel now. I'm going to make sure it's clean in here. We don't want any debris in here to ruin the seal on the new one. So I'm just going to clean that. And remember, no metal tools in here. You're going to scratch your deck and you're never going to fix your leak. And the reason leaks are important is, number one, if this thing keeps dripping, you're going to get a green stain in your sink. Possibly ruin the chrome finish on the drain or the brass plate finish on the drain. And this one being antique brass. 
Number two, you're going to waste water. And if it's hot water, it's even worse because your oil burner is going to keep kicking on all the time when it doesn't have to because this thing's going to be dripping hot water and the oil burner is going to think it's having a call for hot water, hot water, hot water. And it's going to keep kicking on. And remember, this is 24-7. This thing is going to be leaking. So not only are you going to burn oil, but you're also going to um, put a lot of wear and tear on your oil burner. So I've cleaned out my cups, my barrels, and I'm going to get a visual down here and make sure everything looks copacetic. Here's our replacement. There's an O-ring and the threads. And then there's this white seal at the bottom is very important. This is what seals onto the deck. And let's see if this one's open and closed. You can see the ceramic disc sliding past itself. And remember, as I stated earlier, although I may have edited it out, ceramic is basically glass. So a little piece of debris gets stuck in there and you go to close it and doink, you're going to chip your ceramic disc and you're going to have a leak. I'm going to finger tighten it up. I'm going to dig the hot one out of my pocket. Here's our hot side. Here's our hot side. It's got a protective cap on it. And slide that baby off of there. And here's our hot side. So my barrel has slipped down. So I'm going to pick up the barrel there. And I'm going to Again, I'm going to check the deck. I'm going to get an eyeball down there, make sure there's no debris and everything looks copacetic. Everything looks kosher. And I'm going to hand tighten that replacement quarter turn ceramic disc cartridge in there. So I got them both hand tight. We're going to clean up the work area a little bit. We're going to get rid of these old ones. Here's our focus. Okay, here's our old ones. And uh, here's the, the shaft and the spline where your handles fit on. Here's the handle. We're just double checking. Here we go. Okay. All right, good. So we cleaned up the work area a little bit. We have them in there finger tight. We got to snug them up now. So we're going to go back. And as I said earlier, marble count, <laughs> marble countertop. So as I said earlier, a hey, 125 an hour, I want to chip the marble countertop. We're going to grab that guy down in the low as we can. I'm pulling up and I'm grabbing as low as we can because we're going to try not to damage the threads on the outside. I'm going to put my wrench on here and make sure it's snug because I don't want to strip the bolt. Now it's snug, but I'm going to give it like another quarter of a turn to make it tight. There we go. That guy's tightened up. Now the other side. Okay, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to grip as low as I can. I'm going to put my adjustable wrench on there. That's snug. I'm going to come again. I don't want to be in any kind of awkward position when I'm doing this. It's a one-shot deal. You strip the nuts, you shot. Okay, here we go. Okay, our two ceramic replacement cartridges are installed. They're snugged up. It's time to put it back together. So, so there may be some debris, there may see, be some dirt around where the astuciate was sitting for all those years. It may be cleaning chemicals, it might be rust and corrosion, and it could be just gunk and dirt. Or schmutz as they say in Ridgewood, Queens. So I'm going to take a brand new straight edge razor blade. And I'm carefully going to scrape any schmutz or buildup that has accumulated over the years off the countertop just so it looks like a nice clean professional job no one's probably going to notice it but I know I did it so we're going to get the schmutz off we're going to make it nice and clean now I'm going to dispose of this properly because we don't want anyone getting hurt and they got a little doggy running around this house and I would hate to see the little doggy get hurt <clears throat> now we got to get this astarsians back on so I'm going to go from underneath the sink. I'm putting one hand under the countertop. I'm putting one hand under the countertop. Okay, to hold that. Because number one, I want to hold it so I get this a stushy and thread it on straight. Number two, I want to make sure I don't twist this whole thing, thereby twisting the supply lines under the sink and causing more trouble. I've just noticed there's a little dirt and schmutz under here. 
so I'm going to give it a squirt of some all-purpose clear. And I'm going to wipe it down. And there's actually a rubber seal under here, and that keeps any uh, water that may land on the countertop from ending up going down the hole and dripping under the sink. So we want to clean this up pretty good. There we go. And I want to clean out those threads a little bit, so I'm just going to use my pinky to get in there. So again, I'm going underneath, I'm pushing up that whole assembly, and I'm going to make sure I got this on straight. I don't want to cross-thread it. If it doesn't go on easy, there's something wrong, it's cross-threaded, or there's something stuck in there, double-check. It's a one-shot deal with this. Brass is very soft, and it's easy to damage. So again, I'm holding it underneath, and I'm going to want to snug up this astuchia and this trim. Now... Now that's looking pretty good, but I'm going to want to check also that, that the clearance between the handle and the, and the top of the astuchian that it looks good when, it, when I'm done. And I, and I can see there, I can see there, I can see there, so I want to make sure this looks good after it's assembled. So I'm looking here that there's, that there's not a gap here, or, or that, it, that it seats enough down that it, when I tighten up that screw, I'm going to get a good, I'm going to get a good grip on the shaft, and that looks just about perfect. So let's do the cold side. So again, I'm going to make sure that deck is clean. I'm going to check the bottom of the astuchian. There's a lot of schmutz down there. I'm going to give it a squirt. There's a rubber seal down here and that keeps any water that ends up on the countertop from dripping down. We're going to clean this baby up. I'm going to stick my pinky in there and clean the threads. Remember, I get 125 an hour for this kind of work, so I got I to gotta do a decent job. So again, I'm holding it from underneath. I'm going to make sure this goes on straight, it's not cross-threaded. If it turns easy like that, you're good. So I'm going to snug it up, okay, and, okay, I'm going to snug that up, and I'm going to double check again that the gap, when it's, when it's finished, that the gap between the astuchian and the bottom of the handle is kosher, and that looks good, so now I'm just going to like redouble my efforts and make sure that this is nice and snug. Again, no wrenches on this. It's very easy to scratch. If you have trouble getting these on or off, uh, I would recommend a strap wrench, a rubber strap wrench. Definitely no vice grips, definitely no channel locks, definitely no pliers, no tools on any kind of finished surface because you're going to leave tool marks and you're not going to have a happy customer or a happy wife if you're doing this for your wife. All right, so this is going to look real good. Now I'm going to put these handles on and tighten up the, the keeper screws on this thing. All right, and now we're going to want to orient the handles. And we're, I'm going to look from the top and make sure they're straight. Everything's looking good. i got to find that screwdriver wherever I put it. Where's my goddamn screwdriver? God damn it, that's a filly. Okay, this is not the same one I had, but it's one. Alright, so now I'm gonna... can't find my fucking screwdriver. Oh, it is my fucking screwdriver. There it is, right in the tool bag where it's supposed to be. Alright, so... Alright, so now I'm gonna want to make sure that these are cl actually closed before I tighten it up. So, I'm gonna orient and, and turn. Okay, so they're both clipped, but I'm going to double check. I'm going to orient and turn. I'm going to make sure they're both on the same plane. Now that it's that it's oriented and it's actually closed, now I can get easy access to that screw there. That little hidden keeper screw. Okay, I'm just snugging it up now. Here we go. I'll see if I can do this lefty so everybody can see. And I'm just snugging it up. Again, a lot of times these are Allen keys, and you got want to make sure that you got the right Allen key. Could be metric. Could be metric. Could be American. You want to make sure you got the right Allen key. Although this is not Allen key. This one's a regular screwdriver. All right, I'm in the slot, and now I'm going to give it the final, 
I'm going to give it the final tightening up there. When I'm in the slot, I'm going to give it the final snugging up. That's for good. This one's for keeps. I get that second one. I'm in the slot. I give it like an eighth quarter turn. Give it like a quarter turn. Okay, nice and tight, nice and tight. All right, we're looking good. Now, the next step. Okay, the next step now. Okay, so we're looking good. Everything's cleaned up. Everything's nice and snug. We're going to make sure these are off. The next step, we're going under the sink, back to those shutoff valves, and we're going to turn the supply back on. And pay attention. Follow along here, because this gets... Uh, this is, part is just as important as anything else I have done here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so here we are under the sink. Here's our uh, drain pipe and here's our hot water supply and our cold water supply. Lucy to open it up. This is the hot side. And now our cold side. I'm going to open it up. Now this is very important part here. These valves never get used. So when you do use them, a lot of times they'll leak from the shaft where the packing nut is. So I'm going to check that to make sure it's not leaking because I don't want to get a call back tonight and people come home and, hey Dino, that sink you fixed, it's all leaking underneath, everything's wet. So I dried it off. Now I'm going to stick my finger back here and and I'm just going to rub it along that shaft and if it comes up dry, we're in business. Okay, so both dry. Now, if it had been any water there, I would double check. I would wipe it down again really good and get inside the back of this hand because I want to make sure that it's dry and I'm actually feeling what I'm feeling. So I'm going to dry it up really good and I'm going to check again with my finger back there and it's dry. But if it had been wet, what I would do is come in here with an adjustable wrench and I would get this packing nut right here. I would get that packing nut. I don't know if you could see it. I would get this, this big nut right behind the handle and I would put my wrench on it and I would give it like an eighth of a turn just like that. I would snug it up. And I'm going to do this side too. I'm just going to give it an eighth of a turn and snug it up. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to dry this up again. And I'm going to double check, and that usually stops any leaks you'll have from the shutoff valves. There's a wire, there's a wire right here holding these, these two valves together. And the reason of that wire is there's drawers that go in this vanity, and there's cutouts in the drawers to go around these pipes. And it's very close clearance, and I remember from when I was here last week when I was identifying the cartridges, that these valves actually have to be straight up and down or the drawer won't close so see like that's uh, horizontal it, the drawer is not going to close so I have to have to get in here and make these perfectly vertical and now again because I messed with these things I'm going to do that trick with my finger behind the handle and check that there's no water now there's a little water in the bottom of the cabinet from us working I'm going to wipe it down I'm going to wipe everything down, a nice clean job, clean these, this chrome trap, just get the dust off. I'm going to double check everything once again. I'm going to check behind these handles for any sign of leakage. And we're done under the sink. Okay, so now is the truth or consequences time. We're going to turn this on and check for leaks. So again, I have taken my aerator out because there may be some debris in the line, uh, number one, from that shutoff valve that we just did. We, we shut it off and we opened it back up. There could be some corrosion that floated loose and chunks and little bits of stuff. We don't want that ending up in our aerator and clogging it up. So the aerator is out. On. On. And then I'm going to go a little bit more and move it around a little bit like that. I'm going to shut it. I'm going to shut it, and now we're going to check and make sure that this indeed has solved our problem. There's always a little water left in the pipe. <clears throat> so you don't want to look like uh, in two seconds and say it's still dripping, because it may indeed still drip. What you want to do is like, wait a minute. 
In the meantime, I'm going to put the aerator back in. Oh, actually, this thing's a little cruddy, so I'm going to clean up this aerator and then put it back in. And again, if it doesn't thread in nice and easy, something's wrong. Double check. You don't want to cross thread anything. This is all brass. It's very soft metal and it's easy to damage. And the aerator actually has two little flats on each side. And I'm going to want to make sure that it's snug. Okie dokie. So again, we're going to... Now we're going to observe for like 15 or 20 seconds to make sure there's no leak. You might get one or two leaks after you shut it off because that's just water in the pipe that's settling down. But like from this point forward, we would want to make sure that, uh, that nothing drips out of there. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to clean the sink. I'm going to clean the countertop. I'm going to clean my handles. Now we'll sit and observe. And a, a way I could check that it's a way that I could check that it's not dripping while not so I don't have to stare at it for half an hour is I can put a piece of dry paper down there and just let it sit while I'm doing something else. There's literally hundreds of ceramic cartridges, and each one is is different. It could be the smallest little different, but they're different, and if you don't have the right one, it's not gonna fit. So it's important that you ID the faucet, that you find the manufacturer, and that you get the right cartridge. Uh, and a lot of times, too, these cartridges are very expensive. If you do find the manufacturer, a simple phone call to the 800 customer service number, you may indeed get yourself cartridges for free from the manufacturer under warranty. A lot of these things are sold uh, with the benefit of quarter-turn ceramic cartridges, lifetime guarantee. So let's, uh, let's give those manufacturers a call and see what you can get. And besides, these cartridges are very hard to get. The plumbing supplies don't carry them because there's so many. There's hundreds. Uh, so you would have to go to either a specialty plumbing supply on the internet or you got to call the manufacturer. So uh, <coughs> if you know the manufacturer, Give them a ring. See if you can get them under warranty. So again, I'm just as I'm going along here, I'm checking that it's not actually pouring out. It's not still dripping. That we actually have solved the problem. I got my dry piece of paper sitting down there, and and that's going to be our tattletale. That's going to tell us if there's trouble. Here's the uh, here's the cutout in that drawer that fits around those pipes. And that's one more thing on this particular job that I have to keep in mind is that this second drawer is actually going to fit in there. This second drawer is actually going to fit in there and pass those valve handles that... Very good, very good. And the last one... Our little friend is here. Look, our little friend is here. Look who I found. Look who I found coming around, huh? You got my screwdriver last week and you chewed it up, didn't you? You want to see that one? He got this last week and he chewed it up. You, yeah, you remember? You remember? But I got it back from him. Okay. I don't even remember his name, but he's a cute little guy. I think he's a puppy. Right? Are you a puppy? Are you a little puppy? Are you a little puppy? Huh? Oh, you're a good boy, huh? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. What you want to do? What you want to do? Oh, you want to lick my hand? Oh, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Let's see you. You're a good boy. You going to bite me? You going to bite me? Okay. Okay. Come on, get out of here. You annoying little mutt. Get the fuck out of here. So beautiful bathroom here, accoutrements. We got a nice wallpaper, beautiful mirror. We got a nice marble uh, vanity with the drawers underneath, the 
keep stuff in there, the faucet doesn't leak anymore, the handles turn nice and easy, it's got a GFI outlet, what more could you ask for? Uh, beautiful brass and crystal fittings and all oh, that toilet paper holder is way cheap, look at that thing, uh, white, white paint, it should be brass in this house. Um, but, it, but I like the idea it's recessed because this is a small powder room if you ask me. For this size house, this is like Sands Point, New York. It's like a $3 million house. It's right on the water. Uh, money, money, money. Which is, uh, look at that, and a cola toilet that's not running. There's no fixing. No replacing washers in these. There are no washers. It's just those ceramic discs. So it's important to identify what you're working on. Uh, a lot of faucets got plastic cartridges. This is a plastic stem assortment. Uh, all different kinds of manufacturers. Plastic. Or well, something like this is American Standard. Uh, this is like a cross between a ceramic cartridge and an and a all-star rover. Um, it's like a hybrid. There's all kinds of things. you got to identify what you're working on. And you got to get the right parts. And then you're all set. I'm just going to pan out here. You look at the big house in Sands Point, New York here. Uh, I think it's on the market right now. Probably like $2.8, $3 million house. There's plenty of property, plenty of land. The neighbors are like way far away. Port Washington, it's about 20 minutes train-wide to New York City. Perfect spot for the uh, executives to live. And that's the kind of people I'm doing work for. And that's why I charge... 125 an hour. Uh, if anybody's having trouble, post a response video. I, along with any helpful YouTube users that may be out there, will do our best to follow up with another response video to help you either identify or actually repair your own quarter turn ceramic faucet. So there's our little handyman zone quarter turn ceramic cartridge repair video with some tips about other kind of faucet stuff. Show you everybody what makes up a, uh, a modern day quarter turn ceramic cartridge. So we're going to take this guy apart and take a look at it. Now I've been a member of YouTube since 2006 and uh, oh I guess about a year ago they invited me to be a YouTube partner. Uh, which I appreciate very much, so I'm a YouTube partner. Now, recently, they invited me to, um, to be able to make longer uh, than normal uh, tapes, so I'm allowed to upload like up to a two-hour uh, YouTube video. Uh, and I appreciate that very much from YouTube, um, so we're going to continue on here. So here's your quarter-turn ceramic cartridge. Um, now, what's holding it together is this uh, C-clip here. Uh, which we're going to try to get out. Uh, this is a neat little tool uh, they call an O-ring pick. And uh, I just picked it and I, and I got this thing sticking out here. So there's our clip. Now that clip holds this whole shaft into the barrel. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull out the bottom seal, this blue seal. And this one was from the manufacturer. It was color-coded and um, uh, color-coded blue was the hot side. Now, the actual part number of this cartridge from my supplier, they call the UNK4004X. The UNK stands for unknown because uh, we don't know the manufacturer of this faucet. Um, it was probably custom made from that house I was in, this big, big expensive house in a very exclusive neighborhood, as most of my customers are, my clientele. So we took the seal out, and in the seal is a small uh, ceramic, uh, I guess that's like a support for the seal. Um, uh, ceramics. Now, it, now this is the actual valve part in here. It's two pieces of ceramic here. We're going to, um, actually I'm going to push that shaft because we took that clip out. I should be able to push the shaft out of here. Uh, either way, we're going to get the ceramic discs out. Okay, here we go. Here's your ceramic your ceramic discs. Uh, this one with the notches being stationary inside the barrel and when you when you twist it, again this one, this one stationary inside the barrel because it's indexed with the little notches and when you twist the handle what you're actually doing is closing the valve and opening the valve and it's 
two parts and ceramic is actually glass or ceramic same thing glass ceramic very smooth surfaces on these two sides that mate and I could feel it with my fingers how smooth it just glides and that's what makes you seal so if you get any little piece of dirt in there or something or a little debris and close it you're gonna scratch you're gonna chip your ceramic and and you're gonna get a leak another part that leaks a lot is this bottom seal here when it seats to the to the deck inside that uh, faucet barrel there so uh, but either way I mean I don't go around like rebuilding these things if it leaks uh, I'll check everything out like I show in the rest of the video and then I'll and I'll replace it I'll identify the manufacturer and uh, and I'll replace the uh, I'll replace the whole thing. I'm not going to mess around. There's, a, there's also an O-ring in there, too. Maybe two O-rings. Let's see if I can get them out and show it to you. That thing's a little stubborn. Let's see. Uh, I like to use the right tool for the right job, so we're going to hammer this with a screwdriver. Making a ceramic cartridge video. You to hey, go ahead. I could edit it out. It's not a problem. Okay. I must have clicked on something because when I go into searches, most of the time I'm getting like a silly search screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got uh, hijacked, maybe. I don't know where it is, but. What is it? You don't get Google yet? Some like weird company or something? Yeah, I have Google, then I go into like. You, know, you come stand, look at it. Okay. Maybe you got hijacked. I don't know where You're going to have to run like that malware program or something. Well, that hijack this. Okay, I just put it in the bench vice. Okay, here we go. So uh, we got that apart. It's all gunked up. And besides the problem of this thing leaking, it was also uh, rough to turn the handles. It was rough and grabby. All right, here's the O-ring. It's all it's all messed up it just broke it. it's not a big deal all right that's the o-ring it's a very bad condition it's disintegrating uh, it's supposed to be soft pliable rubber and it's actually very brittle and uh, cakey and there's actually a second o-ring in here I told you there's usually two o-rings there it is as long as I don't put this o-ring pick through my finger I'll be all right all right here we go is the second o-ring still haven't got it out but I still didn't put it through my finger yet it wouldn't be a a day with the handyman if I didn't put something through my finger. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's the second O-ring. Um, so these, if the O-rings fail, what you'll get is a is a leak from the from the stem there, and it'll come out on the countertop. Uh, but again, I wouldn't go taking this apart and just replacing the O-rings and put it back together. Although I'm capable of doing such a thing, um, I charge money for my work, and I'm not gonna put my reputation on the line by just coming in and replacing an o-ring on, on something like this I would rather replace the whole cartridge um, of course it is certain situations when I had to if we couldn't find a replacement or out of stock or something like that I might attempt it but I would make a big disclaimer to my customers and tell them exactly what I was doing and uh, how I feel about it alright so there's the o-ring that that seals the whole threads um, so basically that's it. Here's a, a little, seems like a brass washer here. Well, that's a nylon washer. So that's probably like a thrust washer to, just to help it turn easy. So there's your uh, totally disassembled quarter turn ceramic cartridge. You got your housing, your stem, your uh, O-ring, your housing O-ring, your two stem O-rings your nylon bushing, your bottom seal, you got your two ceramic cartridges, uh, your two ceramic uh, whatevers, and you got the third ceramic thing. And this was just a safety cover it was shipped with. Hello. Yeah, okay, all right, I'll wash my hands and stuff.